Well, it's season two of Backcountry College, and we're going to talk about a couple of things today. We're going to talk about preparedness, we're going to take a look at an emergency kit that I've put together, and then we're going to talk about how to reduce the amount of stuff that we carry with us just by taking into consideration the versatility of what we do have. Now, I hate carrying a bunch of stuff, especially when it's redundant but you still need all the things you use on a daily basis and to be prepared for an emergency if you happen to get in trouble out there. Now a big part of being prepared is using your head to figure out the... Not like that. Stave.com and Backcountry Hunters and Anglers coming to you from North Central Idaho and bringing you another episode of Backcountry College. Now I mentioned earlier that I hate having a bunch of stuff with me, but I still like to have the essentials. Now for me that's a map and compass, a signal mirror, multiple fire starters, pocket knife, water bottle, cook pot, shelter, ground cloth, poncho, water catchment flashlight, whistle, paracord, snare material, thousand feet of string, a uh, fishing kit, a basket, a bowl, a fly swatter, a hot pad, a net, and uh, one of those little fancy things that you pull over your eyes to go s to sleep with. You know, people on the movies use them. You gotta have that. Thing. And you've gotta use your imagination a little bit. But I've got all that stuff and more on me right now, and most of it's right here in this little thing. We'll start with what I've got right on myself. I always carry with me two things in my pocket, and that's a Leatherman and a lighter. Now, Leatherman is, well, it's a multi-tool. It's got all sorts of stuff on there. I use the pocket knife mostly. Uh, you've got the pliers, a file if you're a bow hunter for sharpening broadheads. You've got screwdrivers, you know, whatever. you got all sorts of stuff on here. Very versatile tool. Number two is a lighter, and it's, uh, well, it's a lighter. I use, I use this thing to start about 99% of my fires uh, because it's quick and easy, um, but you know, when the cards are down, I don't want to be depending on this thing because they do fail. They run out of gas. You know, it's got little uh, parts and pieces that can go awry. And so in my pack, I've got a couple other fire starting methods. Uh, we'll talk about those a little bit later. On this lighter, you'll notice I've got a couple of wraps of duct tape around the handle. Uh, you can take a, take a couple of wraps off, make a couple of twists with it, put it on the corners of a plastic bag, and uh, strengthen the corners to attach paracord to to stretch it up, make a tarp. Um, you can use it as an improvised part of a, a medical kit for closing up wounds or whatever. Um, very versatile. If I'm in any kind of a big country at all, I always have uh, a map and compass with me. And uh, you've seen this on the navigation tutorial. I like a sighting compass with a mirror. Not only is it more accurate than a base plate compass, but you can also use your mirror for signaling if you need to. The stock lanyard on this compass I've replaced with paracord. Now when I say paracord, I'm talking about the good, high quality mil spec paracord, not the commercial stuff that you'll find at most outdoor retailers. Now you may have to order this stuff online. It's a little bit hard to find, but it's worth it, and let's see why. Now I've got two pieces of cordage here. They both look very, very similar on the outside, and honestly, they'll both work very well for, for most applications. Where the big difference comes in is, the, is the, how versatile they are and what's inside. Now, we'll take a look at the commercial stuff first because this is probably what most of us have in our packs. There's going to be either one or multiple polyester, I, I'm assuming this is polyester, cores inside. Now, if we pull one of those cores out, we'll see that it's, it's made up of multiple plies. But this stuff is very stretchy and very weak. You can break it very, very easily. Not very useful. The military grade uh, stuff, on the other hand, is made up of, it'll have eight or nine cores, nylon cores inside of it. Each one of those cores is made up of three plies. And if we pull one of those out, these things are extremely strong. You you can't break that. You'll cut your fingers before you break that. You can use this stuff for snare wire uh, or fishing line, and you can separate the, uh, the, the, the cores that make up these inner cores 
and even into finer stuff and use that for even finer fishing line. I've also replaced my boot laces. So I've got about 10 extra feet of paracord on my boot laces. Good thing about paracord boot laces is you can pull these things off, pull the cores out, and then replace your laces with the outer shell so you don't have to give up your boot laces to use more cordage. So by going with good high quality mil spec paracord, you've got 10 times the amount of cordage you brought with you. Much more versatile than the commercial grade stuff. And the last thing I always have with me is my hat. Now, I was only half joking about all those essentials that I was talking about earlier. You know, the net and the, the little blinder thing for sleeping and all that stuff. Um, I use my hat all the time for a hot pad, for instance, um, for catching bugs when I'm out fishing, as a fly swatter, uh, for, as a basket for collecting mushrooms or doing whatever. I mean, a, a hat, believe it or not, a hat is a very versatile piece of essential equipment. So that pretty much does it for the things that I always have right on my body. Now let's take a look at this thing. Now I don't normally mention products in Backcountry College because that's not what it's about. But I feel like I'd be doing you a disservice if I didn't tell you about this thing because I have literally looked for years for something exactly like this and finally found it. Basically what I was looking for was a, bo a metal bottle that didn't neck down. Now the reason I wanted a metal bottle is so I can heat up water, I can cook in it, things like that. But I didn't want it to neck down because I wanted to be able to fit this pack in it and I wanted to be able to get it in and out really easily because I use this thing on a daily basis for, for cooking or heating up water, making tea or whatever. Another cool, or a couple of cool things about this is it's got, first of all, it's got this little O-ring so it's waterproof. And then it's also got this lid that you can turn upside down, put on top there, it fits right inside the rim, really uh, decreases the amount of time it takes to boil water. This is called a BOT, B-O-T, and it's made by Vargo Outdoors. Inside that, I've got this little Cordura uh, bag here. Inside this thing, we've got a bunch of goodies. So, I've got about 50 feet of extra paracord, which we know is the good stuff. I've got a match case here. And inside this match case, this is a waterproof match case. Inside this match case, I've got matches, of course. But then I've also got this, this white thing up top here is some petroleum-soaked cotton balls. And they're sitting down in a little foil packet. Uh, I've... I've put them in this foil for two reasons. First, to keep them separated from the matches. And secondly, uh, when you spread this stuff out, th these cotton balls are very good at fire starting. Uh, they'll catch a spark and they'll burn. And if you leave them in this foil packet, they'll, uh, they'll burn for 30 minutes um, or maybe even an hour. I've got a, uh, a whistle and this thing will bust your eardrums out if you're not careful. Extremely loud whistle uh, for signaling if I happen to need it. Um, and I've also got this uh, LED light that stays on. A ferro rod here for starting fires. This thing is, uh, and this ferro rod has a handle, a wooden handle, and it's made out of fat wood and, or lighter wood, which is the real resinous heartwood from a, a pine or a dug fir or something like that. You can scrape wood off of this handle and scrape you up a little pile, shoot a spark into it. That stuff will catch a, a spark. You can get a fire going in some pretty nasty conditions with this little piece of equipment right here. Another thing I'll always have with me is just a little small fishing kit. All this is is a long shank hook, a couple of split shot, about 10 feet of monofilament, and it's wrapped around a little foam core uh, with a piece of electrical tape uh, wrapped around it just to keep everything together. The last thing I've got in this bag is a, a, a big blue trash bag. Now, I used to carry um, just one of the standard 50 gallon uh, uh, black trash bags with me, but they, they only come down, when you put them over, you only, they only come down just a little bit past my waist, which is okay, but it's not great. And at the last uh, BHA rendezvous down in Denver, there was a fella there uh, from Outdoor Safe, uh, the company where I got a lot of this stuff. And he was given a presentation and he had these blue trash bags and I've never seen them this long. I think this thing's 68 inches. Um, and so you can put this thing over you and it, and it depending on how tall you are, it, uh, it almost cover your entire body up. 
Now, some people get down on trash bags as, as part of survival uh, gear, uh, but that's because they're, they're cutting head holes and they're cutting arm holes in the things. They're poking their arms and heads out. Don't do that. You get wet that way. All you got to do is take this thing and cut you a little face hole, throw it over the top of you just so your face sticks out so you're not breathing inside the thing. You don't want to asphyxiate yourself, uh, but you also don't want the condensation in there. This thing will save your life in an emergency situation, I'm telling you. Uh, it, it's really not that heavy and it packs down pretty light or pretty small as you see. Uh, you can also use this thing as a water catchment. You throw it out there, use it to catch rainwater, funnel it into a bottle. Uh, you can split it and uh, beef up the corners like I was telling you with the, uh, with, with the uh, duct tape. Stretch it out as a tarp. You can use it as ground cloth. That pretty much does it for the things that I, that I always have with me. Now I've always got other things in my pack depending on what time of year it is, uh, what I'm out doing. You know, I've, I've usually got a down vest in me uh, out, out in the mountains because the temperatures can swing drastically even in the middle of summer. When it comes right down to it, it doesn't matter what you have in your pack if you don't have the knowledge to use this stuff. You know, I, we hear on occasion of people that get lost for days on end that have a GPS in their pocket because they've never taken the time to take the thing out, turn it on, and learn how to use it. So get out there and, and learn how to use this stuff. You know, build a fire with your, with your ferro rod. You know, build a shelter with your bag and figure these things out before you need them uh, so that you're not out there uh, in a survival situation where you're cold and wet and your fingers are numb and you're trying to figure all this stuff out. You need to have had that, that experience before you get to that point. We'll catch you next time.